Kay is everyone's mother. She is everyone's auntie. She's everyone's grandma. She is the older woman that lives in the neighborhood that everybody knows and everybody loves because she's always been so nice over so many years. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. The only thing that she does that's different than everybody else is that she serves food for homeless people. She does it under a networked organization that's completely unofficial but strongly affiliated with churches in the area and she calls it the Lord's Table. We feed under the freeway, under 6th and Columbia, it's a parking lot, and we start feeding from 8 o'clock. I've been doing this for 23 years, feeding the homeless in, a court, in obedience to God's command, feed the hungry. It's in Matthew 25. He says, when you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So it's a real privilege. <laughs> yep, we feed quite a few. They're all lined up waiting for us from 6th Avenue Club to 7th. <laughs> I ate in Kay's line for probably nine or ten years. I don't know if I'd been able to survive on the streets, you know, without, you know, there's not too many places you can go at 8 o'clock at night. I know that every time you show up, there's going to be hot food, and there's going to be this little lady who tells you how much she loves you, you know. Keeps me busy. <laughs> Four nights a week <laughs> for 22 years. It's amazing because my husband doesn't complain, you know, because... We haven't had a vacation. <laughs> we used to attend a little church on Beacon Avenue, and there was a lady who had been a widow with eight children, and she met this man who was formerly a homeless guy, and he, he had become a Christian, and his heart was filled with compassion for the homeless. And he convinced his wife to feed the homeless. And he just had an old Volkswagen. She didn't drive. They had one table. And they had, um, she were, was working at a noodle shop, Chinese noodle shop. And they would give her all the reject noodles. And that was a meal. She would make the broth and serve that. And my son, happened to learn about that, about their ministry. So he went down, he said, Mom, let's go and help them. I said, Norman, we might lose our home, you know, if somebody gets sick. <laughs> I was very <laughs> reluctant to just go ahead, you know. Anyway, he took me down and I was so impressed with their faith. And I thought, wow, when she has eight children and she's the only one working, I don't think her husband had a job. And then he became ill and he passed away. So she couldn't drive. So I was left holding the bag, you know, because I knew those guys would be lined up waiting. So that's when I took over the responsibility. But I just feel that it was the Holy Spirit who open the door, because <laughs> I would have never <laughs> my own. In the early 1990s, government-run services were more plentiful back then. But as time goes on and the economy got worse, more people got in unemployed and they started losing everything that they had, Kay saw that the line began to grow and more and more people started coming through the Lord's table every night to get their one warm meal per day. The people that she's serving are people that she looks at as if they were her children. And if she doesn't show up and she doesn't bring the food and they don't get served food, they don't eat. And if they don't eat, she didn't serve her kids. They call me mama. <laughs> I said, grandma. 
But anyway, it's been a real, um, I think we get more blessed, even more than the people who eat. It's more blessed to give than to receive, you know, and that's true. I think there's a huge challenge of being able to do that every day. First of all, it's a lot of work. Secondly, it's never just right out there. It's always either too hot or too cold. It's too windy or too rainy. Cold tonight. It's a very difficult environment to, to face every day. And on top of that, there's been a lot of bureaucratic hurdles that, that she and the group have had to overcome. One time, the mayor, not this mayor, but uh, he forbid anyone feeding outside after six will be arrested. And I, I was the only one who fed that late. Another time too, they wanted me to get a restaurant license. I said, I'm not a restaurant. <laughs> I don't collect any money, you know. So I wasn't going to go to jail. <laughs> so I said, all right, I'm not cooking that night. You know what happened? The city council people got the table out, made their, fed them, and the mayor couldn't put them in jail. <laughs> so he had to rescind that. <laughs> made the newspaper. <laughs> chili, chili, chili. Yeah. You've got a warm heart. <laughs> you know, Kay's not going to be able to do this forever. I think that there's going to be a big void when that happens. Hopefully, you know, there will be people who will um, step up and see her vision and continue. And, and uh, because where would 100 to 150 people go to eat every night? Like, seriously. Uh, it's just been a miracle. So, I'm still at it. <laughs> 23 years. <laughs>